When it comes to lettering, any form of sequential art that you're working in, Clip Studio Paint is up there with the best of them. Perfect. Hey guys, White Monk here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to letter in Clip Studio Paint, particularly for your comics like the bubbles and text and all of that fun stuff. In today's video, we're going to go over the basics of what you're capable of in Clip Studio Paint when it comes to lettering your sequential art of any form as well as a few tips and tricks on how to letter your work. Nothing too crazy and in depth, but it should be fun and show you all the capabilities of the software. We at Sad Dan partnered up with Celsius, the creators of Clip Studio Paint, to bring this video to you, as well as this whole playlist where we go over Clip Studio Paint tutorials, showing you guys its cool capabilities. You can use the link in the description to get a three month free trial of Clip Studio Paint. We at Sad Day M are launching our first physical print magazine called Super Saturday, and inside Super Saturday contains Saturday Wars. Saturday Wars is kind of like our Avengers Infinity War style event where we take the lead characters of all of our core series coming together to fight a common evil. Basically our Thanos, or our, or our Loki, whatever, you get it. And so I'll share some visuals from our other talented artists within Sad Day M using Clip Studio Paint to create their parts of Saturday Wars. When we're in the different universes of each series, the creator is kind of in charge of the visuals of that. And we all use Clip Studio Paint to bring it all together so that it has a uniform vibe all through. And then you guys get to see some really cool ways on how you can letter, because there's just not one way. There are many ways. Let's go. So you open up Clip Studio Paint, and here's a page straight out of Saturday Wars, illustrated by Rashad Melhouse. We have Cass McClough Striker, a couple other characters, and then Sano in the bottom right. And let's just add bubbles to this bad boy. Go to the layer window on the right. Let's create it and let's create a balloon the manual way. It's similar to how I usually do it when I'm working traditionally. That's literally just drawing the lines and in this case having a strong understanding of layers. We've created a new layer. You find a tool you want. I'm going to hit shortcut P. So we hit pen and I use the real G pen because it mimics the look of a traditional G pen. And let's just make our bubble. And this playlist is a video that goes a little bit into creating clean, smooth lines and clips of your paint. And you guys can go watch that and watch the rest of the videos in this clips of your paint playlist. Right, just drawing the lines. We can do something a little more stylistic. Use the eraser to clean up the edges. So here we have that. Now we want to create the tail. You want to point to the character's mouth or at the very least their head. I like the tail to be sharp. Now shortcut W. You want to make sure you're on refer edited layer only to select. You want to make sure you're on this new layer that we created that we're doing all of this on. So you ain't toggling the layer off and on. Annual balloon. But we want something underneath Let's call that white out. As you can see, the layer is just lines. So we want to fill it in with white with this new layer. So the balloon is not see-through unless you actually want it to be see-through. Shortcut W, refer edited layer to select. If you select while you're on the white out, it's just going to select the whole thing because there is no layer on white out. So you want to make sure you're on manual balloon when you're actually doing the selecting. Command D or Control D to deselect. Now we're on manual balloon, select it. Expand by one pixel. Go to white out, make sure your color is on white, and then hit fill on the white out layer. If you want to be more organized, you can select them both. Either merge them where they all become one layer, or you can put them in a folder. And then we can call the folder balloon. That way, now we're on that folder. If we command T or control T, we can just move that around. Then shortcut T, we add in text. The text I use is wild words Roman. There's an italicized version and a bold italicized version. I kind of use them all. We can increase the size of it and let's increase it to 50. In this case, that's only because the canvas here we're working with is really big. We click in it and then we add our text. We can make parts of it bold or italicized just to add more emphasis and then influencing the way it's going to be read. Let's increase this a little bit more, maybe to 60. You want to make sure the text is centered in the balloon. If not, it can be a little disorienting. And if you notice the layer name for the text, when you add text, it creates a new layer. And the layer name is essentially what's on the text. I believe you can rename it, but there's no need for that. While you're on the text layer, you see these options, you can kind of resize the text, move it around how you want. But I usually keep it at the default. You can also highlight it and play around with more settings. Have it be underlined, left alignment, center aligned, or right aligned. Center aligned is usually what you want to do. That's comic standard, and that's how it's justified. And then line space is just the distance in between. And I usually keep it anywhere in between 100 and 120. And there are a lot more settings that I recommend you guys go play around with. 
if you want more options, there are more options and you can access those by hitting this wrench and then you see it because if you don't see it by default, that's because it's not toggled on here. So you can play around with the word spacing if I toggle that on. Now word spacing will be part of it right here. It wasn't there before. And with word spacing, that's just the distance in between the words. So you can play around with that as well. But I usually just keep that at zero unless I really feel the need to mess around with it. Now, like I said, there's a previous video where we go over drawing smooth lines in Clip Studio Paint. But what you could also do here is rather than using a raster layer, which is a normal layer to create those lines, we could have used a vector layer. Now, I'll explain why. Vector layers don't get pixelated if you transform and move them around a lot. Transforming, that's just scale, rotate, free transform, the list goes on. We could just duplicate this as an example, turn off one of them, and then we can change this raster layer into a vector layer by right clicking, convert layer from raster to vector, and hit OK. And now it's a vector layer. If it hits shortcut O, turn to an object, you can kind of see the anchor points. And these anchor points, we can kind of mess around with. But it's much more difficult to edit once you're converting it into a vector layer versus making it a vector layer from the jump. So I'll turn that back off. And we'll just create a new one, but this time with a vector layer. And this time we know what the text is. So we're just gonna draw the balloon around it. Now, because this is a vector layer, you can see there are lines I don't want. Yes, we could just try to erase a vector layer, but it's weird. It's much easier to use the eraser tool, but rather than using a regular eraser tool where it's kind of messy to work with, you use a vector eraser. And that way it's easier to just clean up. Once you touch a stroke that has been kind of split by another stroke, the unwanted part gets removed easily. And then we can just clean out the edges Again, we want to draw the tail, the vector eraser. Everything is much cleaner. Let's call this a manual vector balloon. But like before, we create a new whiteout. To put in the whiteout, it's easier to just temporarily turn off the text and also turn off the layer behind it just for a second. And while you're on the vector layer, instead of using the W to select, expand, and then fill, you can just use the shortcut G and then shortcut G again to get to the fill tool and then on refer other layers you then want to come down and make sure the area scaling is on zero scaling mode is in the center with the curved you have fill up to vector path ticked on if you hit the plus you make sure include vector path is also ticked on remember if you don't see it you can always come here go to reference and toggle them on or just do it right here once you're done on the whiteout just tap the middle and it will automatically fill. Now, this is if you want to have a black balloon and then have the text be in white. We don't see it because it's in black. Let's duplicate that for a bit. Highlight, and we can just change it to white. And you can do that. This is actually a blackout. So we want to do white. Turn everything off because it'll just make it easier. Because if everything is on, let's say that was on and if you want to fill in the white out double click the G the shortcut to get the referral layers and the fill tool and you have the settings and uh, the tool properties where you want them if you click on it again you want to make sure it's on white but using black just so we see you can see that it doesn't reach some places because they're blocked right for some that aren't even fully blocked because we have the close gap to the fullest and I want to reduce that because we have close gap to the fullest Clip Studio Paint might take gaps that are not necessarily closed as closed. It might just view it as something that's completely closed. And that's why it didn't go through this, go through this path. If we reduce the closed gap, now it does, right? Now it does, but this one was closer, so it didn't go through the E. Control Z, reduce it again. Now it went through that one, but it definitely didn't go through the O, the P, the A's, because those are completely closed, right? So it's best to Control Z, turn off those layers where the text is so we don't have to deal with it and the art in the background so we can just fill in black completely. But remember, now we wanna do white instead. So you wanna make sure you change to color white and then fill. And voila. Make sure the text is above those layers so you can actually see it because if the text layer was underneath the whiteout, then you won't see it. Pretty obvious. Now let's just put it all in a folder and call it vector balloon. And there you have it. You can also do little things where we take this text and let's say 
we duplicate that just so we have different copies. And this one, let's say we pull it over here where it kind of gets lost in the background. And let's say you want the character to actually be thinking. We don't want them to have the actual dialogue. We don't want them to say it. We just want them to think it. And you don't want a version of a speech bubble where you kind of have thought bubbles instead of speech bubbles. Thought bubbles are essentially ones that look like this, right? And this is just showing what the character is thinking. If you don't want to do that, and you want to do it in a different way where you see in other mangas where they just have a stroke over the text. You can just go to that text right there and let's delete this layer because we didn't do anything with it. Let's go to the text layer and then over here in effects for the layer property window, just hit that and it creates a border effect. So it creates a border or a stroke and you want to increase the thickness, make it a little, let's, let's, let's make it thick, huh? And let's give it like, a 10. And now there's a stroke around it. If we turn off the layer underneath, it'll be easier to see. Some people use this method to show what a character is thinking uh, instead of using an actual thought bubble. Now those are manual ways of adding balloons. Let's briefly look at some of the other ways and in fact, in some cases, easier ways of adding speech balloons and thought balloons in Clip Studio Paint. Copy all of this, Command C or Control C. And then I'll turn it all off. I believe when you select it like that, it selects obviously the text as well as some of the properties. You know how we made one of the text bold. I believe if you copy and paste it, in fact, let's just test that out. It'll just put it exactly how you had it before. And it, it creates a new layer every time you do it. Command Control Z, because that's not what we actually want to do. Shortcut T, and it gives you these options right here. We got an ellipse balloon right here. And what this does, if you have that ticked on, it creates a vector layered balloon for you already. And then if you hit the balloon tail and you just go like so, it creates it easily. And these are actually vector layers. So if we hit shortcut O and we tap on it, you get to see the anchor points that are much easier to edit because they're so organized and round and perfect and whatever. You actually wanted that perfect ellipse. You can also have two tails if two characters are saying the same thing. In this case, they're not though, so it'll be weird, but you get my drift. Once you have the ellipse balloon ticked, you can also play around with the tool properties if you don't want the lines to be that thick, at least not in the beginning. Let's put it at a five and do it again. And there you go. Change it to the balloon tail. You can even do a balloon tail and a thought balloon tail, like so. If you do it this way, and then you wanna add text to it, you just go to text, and then just click in the center of the balloon. And this way, Clip Studio Paint will already have the text ready to go, centered for you. And we can just copy and paste what we had before, and there you go. And it's all one layer, so if I toggle on the visibility, everything kinda of goes away. The curved balloon is essentially you deciding where those anchor points are going to be from the jump. So you tap, 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 close. And there you have it. Shortcut O, tap on the line so you can see the anchor lines, and then you can, you know, clean out the circle if you want to have it come off and look better. Before you lay down the lines, you can actually play around with the brush size and let's increase that to 10. And there you go. Shortcut O, rotate it if you want. Now the balloon tail in this case is kind of too thick and too wide. Command Control Z. While you have balloon tail highlighted, you can see the length of the tail or if you want the tail to do different things. Let's cut that down to say 40. And now, there you have it. If you want the tail to bend, you can go from straight to polyline, tap, tap, and double tap when you're done. A spline, tap, and double tap when you're done. The balloon pen is just manually, literally drawing the line, and it always gives you a vector. And that's how it is, right? You don't even need to complete the line and it'll just complete it for you once you're done. And then you can add a balloon tail to it. Again, you wanna increase that brush size maybe to 20 before you do it. So let's mess around with the vector lines a little bit. You can also mess around with the scaling of the tail if that's not to your satisfaction as well. Notice that when we did all of this, we did not need to create a whiteout for it. It automatically comes with, click in the middle. If you're not, if you're dissatisfied with how it's centered, you can move it around a little bit. And there you go, it's all in one.
if you want to change the brush size or looking a little weird and you've already drawn the bubble and you don't want to have to redraw the bubble, you can play around. Clip Studio Paint has a host of tools that allow you easily edit it afterwards. Here's an example. If you go to the adjust line width tool and that's on tool navigation here in the layer property window, if you hit on that, it then gives you these options where you see the correct line, remove dust. You want to make sure you're on correct line and highlighting correct line width. And then right here at the bottom, let's say you want to narrow part of the line and let's say by five, all you then have to do is make sure you're on that vector layer and just go over a little bit. That part got thinner. If you do it again, it'll just keep getting thinner. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Yeah, I just want to thin out the balloon tail part. You can do that. If you want to thicken parts of it, you want to hit thicken, and I have it on 5.7. By thickening just certain edges of it, it starts to make it look a little more natural, almost like you drew it out traditionally uh, versus digitally. It, it then starts to show like a certain stroke to it. Another tip is the placement of your balloons, your speech balloons, your thought balloons, or any kind of text. Where you place them is really important because you want to be clear as to which to read first or second or all that. Say we had a speech balloon, and let's say one here, and we'll get to that. It's kind of difficult which one to read first. Do you go one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. You get what I'm saying. It's a little confusing. You want to make it easy because you don't want to pull the reader out of immersion. So you want to kind of have text placed like so. You also don't want to cover important art too much. It's really clear what to read. One, two, three, four. Sometimes you don't want text too close because here, if it starts to go back up, it might be confusing for these two. So you don't want to do that. Sometimes you can have some of them overlap if one character is talking over the other slightly or something like that. Or if one person is saying all of this and you do these in case maybe you want the text being read and let's say you have an ellipses, which is a dot, dot, dot. And then you have a dot, dot, dot to start the rest of it because you want the reader to kind of pause before they say the next thing. And then sometimes the shape of this speech balloon can dictate the emotion that the character is feeling. So that's all clear. Now, sometimes you don't want text too close. Let's say you wanted to continue that and then you had a little bit of text right here at the edge. This is dangerous because some books have what is known as a live area. And this that goes around over here. And you kind of want any kind of text to remain inside this live area. Because if it's too close to the edge of the paper, it could get cut off in printing. And so if you have text this, this way out and there's text in there that's supposed to be read, it might get rejected because it will get cut off or at least it has the potential to get cut off. And that's why in the live area you have text as well as any important art that you know definitely needs to stay in. A balloon like so, it's kind of popping out of the live area. You just want to make sure the text is in the live area. That's what matters. And you don't want the and you don't want a speech bubble or a thought bubble or whatever to cover too much of the good art because you want to show that off. And usually you figure all of this stuff out during your storyboarding phase. So in some cases, there are some artists out there who purposely storyboard in such a way where they leave space on the panel that's supposed to be occupied by speech balloons. But there are times where a completely different person is doing the littering. The artist might not have thought that far ahead to plan for spaces where the speech bubble is going to be. And so the letterer will have to figure this stuff out and make sure they're not covering any important art. Another thing I like to do is keep the speech balloons inside the panel. And then you have the text like so. The only times I'll have the speech balloons above the panel is if I want the reading to maybe continue across and there's dialogue or monologue going through each panel and then their speech balloon will kind of go above everything. So stylistically, it's completely up to you. And then in places where I use a square is definitely if somebody is narrating or if I just want to briefly say where the scene is taking place or the time or something like that. But I'm just sharing some of my thought process. Please note that these are just examples. There are a couple things I'm covering here with these red lines that I probably wouldn't cover normally. But speaking of examples, 
Rashad, who illustrated this and illustrates the Saturday where all our characters reside and where the story takes place for Saturday Wars, has footage that I can share with you guys, showing you guys how he letters and adds text balloons to his work, which is really cool. If you don't know, Rashad is also the creator of Outland, published and serialized on Saturday PM. If you notice, Rashad is doing all the things that we've mentioned throughout the video, except here, he's getting pre-made balloons that you can find in the material section and within Clipsio Paint. Some of it you can download in the Clipsio Paint community. It has speed lines, speech bubbles, thought bubbles, sound effects, the list goes on. And you can just click and drag and then edit the same way you would using the balloon tools. You can thicken the lines, narrow the lines down, add a balloon tail. They come in vector lines so you can play around with the anchor points and readjust, resize, scale, do whatever you want with it and edit it that way. He also has the text already in place so he knows where to put the balloons. Rashad is also using a really cool font here called Tough as Nails and doing some interesting stuff, boldening parts and things like that to influence how it's going to be read. You can also do this with different kinds of font. Maybe if the character is yelling, you can use a very scratchy, loud type of font, like say a death rattle. There are lots of really cool fonts like Tough as Nails. I use Wild Words, Edo SV, Anime Ace. I believe Jay Odin, the creator of Hammer, also uses that. Just don't do Comic Sans. Whatever you do, stay away from Comic Sans or I will find you. It has its pros, it has its cons, but I don't care. It is ugly. There's still a lot of stuff we didn't touch on, like onomatopoeia. It's kind of like the weird made up sounds to mimic real sounds found in comic books and manga. You know, kind of like the pows and the kapows and things like that. Sometimes I use exclamation marks and I allow the reader to use their imagination to imagine what the sound is going to be and then maybe the size and the chaos with my exclamation mark and inform them about how loud I want it to be or how chaotic I want it to be. Rashad's also making sure to have the text within the live area so he has an extra layer that's kind of like a guide to make sure that he's not dangerously close to the edge. We'll also get another example from our talented French artist Isaka, who's the new creator for Clock Striker, published and serialized on Saturday AM, created by our founder Frederick Jones. Isaka is also using some of the same techniques except the way he sets his pages up, he's using a frame border and I go over all this kind of stuff in a previous Clipsio Paint video that you can find on the playlist where you can have the speech bubbles inside the panels perfectly fitting. They'll be in frame borders or frame folders. Is right clicking on vector lines, editing it that way, adding anchor points, having a blast really. But he's still using the same techniques. Except here he creatively is using a balloon pen and adding and having these joint balloons and also doing creative stuff with the balloon tails, almost like there's a bunch of noise in the bushes or there's somebody yelling behind him. In the creative way, he's creating his own original bubble, still using Clip Studio Paint. And Clip Studio Paint is making it hella easy. Aside from that, we're done. Please, this video I know has been a lot and this whole playlist hopefully has helped you guys throughout your Clip Studio Paint journey. It'll mean a lot. If you guys like the video, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please go smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications and follow me on all social media. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. If you want to check out Isaka and Rashad's work, they're available. They're available in the Saturday AM app. You can check out all of our magazines, Saturday AM for the Shonen series, Saturday PM for the Sanin series, and Saturday Brunch for the Jose series. All on our app, the latest issues of all the magazines are free. Also publishes my manga Apple Black. Links to everything you could possibly need will be in the description below. If you're new to what we do, you can read the starter guide inside the app. It has everything you need to know, including character profiles of our core series. The list goes on. Please check it out. Please subscribe. We also have the Saturday AM Resist issue that contains a prologue of Saturday Wars. Kind of like a mini teaser prequel type thing that you guys can enjoy for free. Super Saturday is available for pre-order. The links will be available in the description. Again, shout out to Celsius and Clipsio Paint for helping bring this video to you guys. Link in the description for a three month free trial. Please check out the other videos in the playlist. This is White Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.